All right, we're going to go ahead and roll into our availabilities this afternoon. We are now joined by Carl Edwards, driver of the number 19 Aris Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Carl, we just finished our first practice session. It was the first time on track with the lower downforce rules package. Um, how did your heart car handle for you, and what, what can we expect to see with the new package this weekend in the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500? Well, I mean, it, Atlanta's just fun. Um, actually, it wasn't that fast in qualifying trim, so we've got to work on that, but I'm having a good time. I mean, you, you really drive the race car here. You dive down in the corner and sliding all over the place, and, I mean, this is, this is really cool. So, um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I mean, you guys all know how special this place is to me, so it's just, just fun to be here and ready to get the race on. It, uh, it's so neat how much the tires fall off, how much the cars are moving around. The groove's going to change a lot, and this, to me, is what it, racing's about. It, it looks like a lot of fun. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. We'll start up front with Jared and then go to Bob. Jared Turner, FoxSports.com. Carl, um, when you made the switch, you've been a Ford guy your whole career. You made the switch to Toyota last year. Was there any like n noticeable difference in the way the cars felt? Um, yeah, I don't know that the manufacturer switch was the biggest factor in the, the difference in the cars. It's really the way each race team builds their cars. But I've been really fortunate to, to work with you know, two great manufacturers, and I've learned a lot about their business, um, both of them. But I'd say for me, the change, it was just, it was, and it still is interesting to learn about Toyota, learn about how they do things. And, um, but really, it's the organization that was the biggest change for me, I believe. All right, we'll go to Bob, Jeff, and then Nate. Uh, Bob Parker, CSPN. It's kind of along this qu question's about kind of along the same lines. Uh, but just as a, all the Stuart Haas drivers will next year will be kind of transitioning from yeah. Chevrolet. Uh, that they've had a lot of them have had long term relationships with to a new manufacturer. What what's it like from a driver to have who's been pitching one for years and years to kind of have to make that switch? Well, like like I said, it's it's interesting to get to learn how someone else does it. Um, as race drivers, we're all in with our manufacturers. I mean, it's a true partnership, and I feel like our sport is unique, and we're fortunate to have the um, the relationships with the manufacturers we do. Um, you know, I always felt really close to to Ford, and then with the switch to Toyota, um, you know, I saw a, a different way of doing things, and I've learned so much about their company. I've been to their plant where they build the cars. I've been to TRD where they build our engines. Um, their involvement is different. I'm sure Chevrolet's involvement is different than that. I, I don't know the, the details of theirs, but um, one of the cool things is to see how competitive each manufacturer is. You look at Toyota and then you know, adding, um, you know, adding Furniture Row, trying to get more cars in the chase, trying to win more. You look at what the, the Ford guys did. You look at how hard everybody's working. I mean, it's, it's cool that the manufacturers are that engaged. And um, you know, I know that TRD and Toyota really believe in winning. I mean, I've never seen guys as excited as they were last week. So. Um, overall, it's, it's, it's neat. All right, we'll go to Jeff Glock and then over to Nate. Jeff Glock from USA Today. Um, we've heard over and over again that another element to the whole lower downforce thing is, is getting a tire that's going to work with yeah. it. Um, how, how has the tire been so far here, and do you feel like, are you optimistic going forward at these races coming up that they'll continue to bring something that suits the package that we have now? Well, I know Goodyear works really hard. At, I mean, Goodyear's if you think about what they do it's it's really pretty amazing these are heavy cars really high loads high speeds the tires are extremely durable i haven't had tire trouble for a long time um this tire at this track to me is kind of the i mean this is the one if you could model the way that you'd like a tire to be you could make the other racetracks any way you'd want you'd want them like this i mean after a lap the tire feels different after five laps it's it's way different and I think that the lower downforce package lets you, you know, gives Goodyear a little more leeway. I know I had a lot of fun at Kentucky last year. Darlington was a lot of fun. Um, this race, I think it's going to be all over the place. I think, you're, you know, like Kyle Busch said, it's going to be nuts. I mean, you're just going to be sliding all over. And um, I think the more downforce we take away, the more corner speed and force that's taken away, if I understand Goodyear's explanation, that means that they'll be able to bring a tire that falls off more and is, is more dynamic. Yeah, you want the tire to give up because it just adds another layer to the race. I mean, you know, do you pit or not? I mean, it, it's you can't just stay out until you run out of fuel and stay in front of the guys regardless of whether they have new tires or not. So I know Goodyear wants that. They want the best tire 
competitively that they can make. But they are put in a box because, uh, you know, we're doing the exact opposite as, as teams. We're going faster and faster and faster through the corner and adding more downforce and adding, you know, more load. And they keep having to make the tire more durable. Um, so hopefully NASCAR continues down this path. You guys know how I feel about it. I've been, you know, screaming I want this, more of this. And um, if they do that, I think it allows Goodyear to make a better tire. All right, we'll go to Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Carl, going back to the, the last lap of the Daytona 500, you were a part of that, obviously, and there's been a lot of dissection of it. And I think Denny said he partially ended up on the outside because you filled that hole on the inside. Maybe could you give your perspective of what that final lap was like? I went back and watched it. Um, it and we actually watched it again this morning. You know, it, Just that outside line just got choked up, and all of those guys decided to stay in line and, and push Denny and... Um, and it just worked out. I, my car was, I was struggling really to keep up. But then when I saw Denny rock it out there, I thought, man, I should have tried that. Um, but you just never know. It, uh, it's those, it's a split second decisions of, you know, whether or not guys stay in line or if they all try to go around, around you when you pull out, you just, you just don't know. But I thought Denny did a really good job. I thought really the guy who did a great job was Matt and realizing that he was about to wreck the entire field as he got loose. And for him to save that was spectacular. So. Overall, though, just a, I mean, it's, you guys have probably said it over and over, but just in a, for me, it was really cool to be part of something where we work together that well as a group, all the TRD and, and Toyota guys. That was pretty cool. A quick follow-up. Did you empathize, empathize, empathize with, with Matt a little bit about, it, it, you know, what, was it damned if he did, damned yeah. if he didn't sort of situation? Yeah, I mean, did it, he not have made the right move? I thought Matt did a great job. I mean, it, it's so hard, guys. I mean, you're in the, if you think about what Matt was doing there, if you go back and watch it, I mean, he's looking in his mirror. He's blocking. He can almost see the checkered flag of the Daytona 500. His car's loose, hanging out. He knows that he's going to, you know, come down. And, he, you know, he probably wasn't aware of how far away Truex was. He just knew Denny was going between him. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lot to manage in a split second. I, I thought he did a really good job. All right. We'll go to Jim Utter and then Claire Lang. I can tell you this. I'd like to have the opportunity right up there. So. Jim Motor, Motorsport.com. Also, in regards to the Daytona 500, uh, d were you kind of surprised that you even had the opportunity to play that role at the end of the race? I think at one point after your incident, you guys were even talking about possibly going to the garage and all yeah. the effort that went into getting your car back into a serviceable position at the end of the race. Yeah, I hit the wall pretty hard. Um, and the car did not feel very good after that. So, I mean, there was a lot of stuff dragging. The suspension was bent up. I mean, it was, it was pretty messed up. So... We were going to initially go behind the wall. I told Dave I thought the tie rod was broke because I really thought it was. And he said, man, you got to take it behind the wall. And I thought, oh, let's just look at it. And so and he got real excited. He's like, cool, bring it here. We'll look at it. And Eric Phillips and the guys started working on it. And my first question to him was once we got going, I was like, is this thing even safe? I mean, because it just I hit so hard. It felt so messed up. I, to finish fifth with that, I think it's a real testament to our team. I mean, those guys, they really did a good job. We've got pit crew guys that are mechanics also, and so they were able to kind of diagnose it and fix it the right way. That, that's, I don't think I've ever had a car that hit that hard and been that damaged and be able to finish well like that before. All right, we'll go to Claire, and then we'll come up front. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. So did you guys, you said you watched it today from Daytona, the ending. Did you get a chance, like in a team meeting, where you all just sort of laughed and went, oh, my God, I can't believe we did that, or, you know, had a chance to share together what happened? Um, not really, not as a group yet, because Denny was gone. Um, but I think overall, we all realized that it was, um, it was a, just a great team effort. And I don't know if it could have lined up any better, really. I mean, literally lined up. It, that last start, all of us being odd numbers, being on the bottom, it just, um, it just worked out really well. I, I think if you did it over and over, it, we probably couldn't repeat that. But as a group, for everyone to work together and you know, for, for Denny to get the win, for Gibbs, um, I'm sure you guys talked a lot with Coach, but I mean, he was – really really amped up going into that race and really excited about it and um he told some stories about 23 years previous winning the race that were pretty cool and so uh anyway i thought it was just overall really cool but yeah i don't think we haven't got together as a group yet and really as, as the drivers and talk much about it hey carl doug rice performance racing network give us your best guess as to what we're going to see here sunday i think you're going to see some good racing i mean this track is just it's just perfect. There are three, four, five different grooves. 
the tires are falling off, the rubber lays onto this track really nicely so that it changes. I mean, you know, five laps from, you're, if you're running in a groove and five or 10 laps later, it, there might not be grip there. So I think you're gonna see that. I think strategy is gonna be a, a big part of it. Uh, I think the other thing that, um, that this track's gonna bring out is it's, it's just gonna be a tough race. It's gonna be tough to stay focused, to manage your car. You know, you see guys out there really struggling, myself included, you know, you hook the apron, car whips sideways. I mean, you gotta really stay on top of it it's like a big dirt race. I mean, it's just really fun. So I think it'll it'll be a race for the fans that watch it. Uh, just know that that whole time in these cars, even in practice now, I mean, you are just driving the heck out of them. I mean, steering right just as much as left. So I hope everybody can see that. I hope that comes through. Any final questions for Carl? All right, Carl, thanks for joining us today. Cool. Thanks, guys.